Okay, good morning. It's 1.13. 33.7 degrees on June 5th. It's day 63. I'm going to get up and over Mather Pass. All right, good morning again. It is 3.27. 30, oh, that's kind of funny. 3.27, 32.7 degrees. Um, right at the foot of Mather Pass. Got a good night's sleep last night. We all decided uh, just on account of kind of the timing of the sun and how we wanted the sun to be, how we wanted everything to be, um, that we'd sleep in an extra hour. So we uh, decided to, well, we said walk off at three and now it's half past three, but you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, hopefully it should just be a mile, maybe a touch over a mile to get up to the top of the pass and then back down um, the other side and we'll keep going as far as we feel like going until the snow gets sloppy or we get wiped or whatever else. Um, it's theoretically possible we could be a bishop tomorrow night. We'll kind of see how it all shakes out. Kind of depends what we do today and then obviously depends what we do tomorrow. Um, the storms did kick up last night. It wasn't anything super brutal, but there was definitely some precipitation. I think it started as rain and then switched over at some point to snow and stuff. And then uh, I think it shut off sometime around midnight, which was just about an hour before I woke up. Uh, tent was definitely coated in a pretty thin, sticky layer of sort of like icy, snowy stuff. Um, but that's all right, you know, I had my earplugs in, I still slept okay and slept warm and everything else, it was fine. So now we're just hoping that that precipitation and weather and all that doesn't have uh, any sort of deleterious effect. Is that right? Deleterious effect. Whatever, on the, uh, on, <laughs> on the ascent here. Um, but I think we're just about all kitted up and I think everyone's just waiting on me now, so <laughs> I'm going to shut off and I'll check in with you guys on the other side of Mather. Biggest, but probably the prettiest we've had. Yeah, this yeah. is And certainly revered as the most challenging on the whole trail. Look at that. Record snow year 2023. 300 times the annual average snowfall. Yeah. And three of the baddest people. Well, two, <laughs> two of the baddest people and, and, and their videographer here. So. <laughs> How was it? Oh. It was good. Oh, uh, icy spray there. It was a little yeah. bit cold, but uh, yeah. it wasn't too bad. Yeah. The boot pack was nice, and we, we made it up without too many issues. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. We'll see how far we get today, and hopefully pizza and beer or chocolate milk yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo!
folks, it is 2.13 p.m. and 64 degrees even. Made it to home for the night, but look. There's dirt and there's trees. There's rocks to sit on. I was actually able to drive my tent stakes into the earth instead of digging out, shoveling out snow, spending an hour digging out, shoveling snow. It's amazing. It's really, really, really luxurious. Um, yeah, so kind of kind of what the team and I have been working with the past, whatever, I don't know, 10 days or however long it's been pretty much, is trying to hike until a time more than hike until a specific mileage because you just can't plan mileage out here. I mean, everyone says it, but heed it because it's it's ridiculous to try and plan mileage. So um, so we, you know, we've, we've basically adopted this like hike until 1 p.m. sort of thing. Um, and, you know, violated it a couple times one way or the other, just, you know, depending on what makes sense. But it's a nice sort of like bounce off point um, uh, around which to sort of base your day. Anyways, um, yeah, dude. So we did Mather Pass this morning. That was awesome, awesome, awesome. Super, super, super intimidating pass. Massively intimidating pass, particularly this year. I think, I mean, it definitely has a reputation on the PCT as being the most intimidating, and rightfully so. And this year is kind of like king of that because of the insane snowfall. Um, it's 12,094 feet of elevation. So it's not necessarily like insanely high. It's just the way that it's oriented and the way that the trail goes up it and stuff. Um, you know, I think we made the right decision yesterday in bailing um, when the snow felt soft and waking up early today, it really, really, really went perfectly. Um, the, the, the climb itself is kind of broken up into sort of three parts, at least it was for us, um, in the conditions that we were in. There's sort of like the first part of the climb and then you get to a big rocky patch in the middle and then you go from the rocky patch just up, up over the top. Um, and of course, right now, the top means cornice as well. So you're, you, you know, your last six feet or whatever it was of, of climb is just right over the top of a cornice, um, which is, you know, also really intimidating and sort of like what not to do in mountaineering 101. Um, but it was fine. It was totally fine. And it went really great. There was another group who kind of overtook us when we were at the rock pile. Um, so we climbed up the first half to the rock pile in our crampons. We got to the rock pile, we removed our crampons so that we could more safely traverse across the rocks. What's up, Shade? Hello. <laughs> I just got so much food. So nice, excited. nice. Um, there was a hiker who just came through with some extra food and, and uh, we were, we've been a little worried about particularly Shade's food supply, so. Um, anyways, yeah, so we took off our crampons at the rocks and then got into position to, to start the second snowy climb from the rocks and uh, and then sat down again and put our crampons back on. It took time, but I mean, for us anyways, it was 100% the right move. Um, felt really good about it. Some some stuff's just gotta take time if you wanna do it safely and, and well, so. Um, yeah, and I think it took us like 20 minutes to get from the bottom to the rocks, maybe another 25 or so to go through all the rigmarole of decramponing and stowing ice axes and stuff and getting over to the other side of the rock pile and then I think it was like 35 for all three of us to get from the rock pile to the to the very tippy top and it was amazing up there we timed I mean we didn't even really have like Alpenglow and Sunrise in mind so much for view purposes when we were planning our ascent it was more just the utility of trying to work around when the sun would be up um yeah anyways um it was really 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 a good climb though really a good climb and honestly, when we were on there, I think all of us agreed, it felt way better than it really looked. It looked terrifying and it felt pretty good. It, it really felt pretty good. Some great footholds through there. So um, let's see, tonight we're camped at mile 828 and we're camped at 8,200 feet of elevation. Can you believe it? I guess technically we were below 9,000 feet the other day at Woods Creek Bridge, but um, really we haven't really been below 9,000 very much at all for a while so really cool to camp at 82 um, and we're also 17 and a half miles from uh, Parcher's Resort which is again sort of like the punctuating place from which we're hoping to catch a hitch into Bishop um, still TBD whether we're going to try and push 17.5 over Bishop Pass tomorrow or whether we'll try and split that up I think likely more likely that we're going to try and split that up so tomorrow we'll get uh, to the Bishop Pass Trail, we'll get over Bishop Pass, and then we'll camp on the other side of it. Um, but it just, it makes more sense to do that than to try and like 
hitchhike from a trailhead like at six o'clock at night or whatever. Um, that's not really super viable, so most of the time. But we'll see how it plays out. So uh, that's it. I think my bunk is all squared away. It's awesome because it went up super quick. I'm gonna cook some dinner, hang out with these awesome guys, and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Thank you.